Hello, everyone. I'm Harpreet Singh, welcoming you to the Future of Work Pioneers podcast. We are continuing with our special edition entitled The Future of the Joint Force, which focuses on innovations within the U.S. Department of Defense. We are privileged to have as our guest today from the Pentagon, the current Assistant Secretary of the Navy, James Gertz. In December of 2017, Mr. Gertz was sworn in as Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition following his confirmation by the Senate. As the Navy's top acquisition ex executive, Mr. Gertz has oversight of an annual budget in excess of $100 billion. He is responsible for equipping and supporting the finest sailors and Marines in the world with the best platforms, systems, and technology as they operate around the globe in the service of the United States. Secretary Gertz, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Herbert. Wonderful to be here with you uh, today. So before we dig into more specific questions, I want to understand how you progress to your current position. For instance, you know, you spent some time at the Air Force, also at U.S. Special Operations Command. Could you tell us a bit more about this move into the Department of the Navy? And what are some of the challenges that are associated with such a move? Yeah, I think I, uh, I'm probably best described as a mutt. You know, I've uh, been all over the place. Uh, uh, and I don't know whether uh, challenges follow me or I'm attracted to challenges. But, yeah, spent a career in the Air Force in uniform, you know, Desert Storm, uh, you know, uh, aviation, uh, you know, jam, jam, jam kind of stuff. And then you know, I went to Special Operations Command, both in, in uniform and not, uh, post 9-11. And, uh, again, very uh, – mission focused, and then uh, came to the Department of Navy now almost three years ago. So, you know, multiple services uh, in uniform as a civilian, I was a political appointee. So uh, I'm either uh, good at a lot of things or not very good and they keep moving me around. But I, I would say the, uh, the thing that's probably a common thread is uh, uh, a lot of joint time and, uh, and I'm not that smart, but I'm a pretty good poacher. And so what it, what it, has helped me is, you know, find best practices, best people, uh, best approaches from across a, a wide variety of the, of, the, of the nation and then being able to apply that to problems. So just like this podcast, a great relationship uh, with the team up there at Harvard and, uh, uh, and figuring out how to connect um, things that haven't been connected either uh, at all or maybe connecting them in new ways, I think is... Uh, so we talk about innovation, one of those things that uh, is pretty exciting and, and, uh, and pretty important. I came uh, to the Navy, in the Department of Navy, I got both the Navy and the Marine Corps. So I think, you know, if I look to the future and the future challenges as we try and compete uh, globally, uh, a large part of that's going to be, uh, you know, really critical that the Navy and Marine Corps is engaged with the right technology, the right ways of thinking, uh, the right uh, networks, the right uh, 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 community of uh, practitioners and relationships. And so that's why I, I kind of sought this out, because that's, uh, again, where I see the challenges uh, sitting in front of us. You know, as we speak, 100 plus ships sailing all around the world, just look in the news every day. And, you know, competition's uh, pretty real for us all over the place. And so uh, being able to help equip and uh, support those sailors and Marines is, is quite a privilege for me. Wonderful. So speaking of innovation, um, innovation has been core to DOD's agenda for a long time. Uh, great innovations like the sp space program, polar exploration, uh, the radar and sonar, uh, you know, and now recently I came to know about Naval X that is uh, engaging with startups. So how do you see uh, the Navy engaging and moving this agenda forward? Yeah, so I think, uh, again, uh, you know, one of the great opportunities for the Navy is we're operating everywhere from the seafloor to space uh, and uh, in, in, a, in a wide variety of, you know, uh, supporting, uh, you know, uh, non-combat um, evacuation missions all the way to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, very uh, challenging missions. And so uh, I, what I have found is... Uh, I like agility as a word more than innovation because I can kind of get a sense of agility, pivot speed. Uh, and, and what I found most important over my time 
is uh, it's really about um, having great networks, uh, creating relationships before you need them, and then thinking and practicing, getting kind of sets and reps in on agile practices and mindsets and solutions uh, before you need them. If you, if you wait for the crisis to occur, to then start trying to think agilely, that's really, really hard. Uh, and so part of what we're working here at the Department of Navy is, you know, continue and expand those connection points and, and allow us to operate at network speed, not at kind of individual relationship uh, speed. Uh, and, uh, and that's real our, where, where our focus is. And I think if we can do that, then emerging technologies like AI or, you know, machine learning or pick whatever your technology is, uh, if you don't have that kind of network approach, uh, the barrier to entry is really uh, high. Uh, the speed to discover something is really uh, challenged. And, uh, and quite frankly, my largest measure is uh, not just discovery, but deploying it. Can we get it out there in the field? Um, if you don't have a great kind of network approach, it, all, all those become very, very difficult to do at scale. So how, how are you specifically leveraging AI and other emerging technologies currently? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, to some degree, um, one of the challenges with AI is we, we either think it's something brand new uh, or we think it's, you know, some monstrous, you know, a huge um, thing that, you know, we've got to get every piece of data in one spot and then put it in the giant gunculator. Um, one of the ways we're thinking about AI is, uh, you know, I, I compared to what the Marine Corps has done with additive manufacturing. Their, um, I think, genius in their approach to additive manufacturing was uh, make it simple uh, to think about and make it practical and start small and then scale up. And, uh, and we've been doing local manufacturer forever in the Marine Corps. Well, now we're just doing it with a new tool and then here's a new way to leverage tools. So, and one of the things we're, we're looking at in the, in the Department of the Navy is we've got some really large AI goals, and then there's things AI can solve today fairly simply, fairly quickly, uh, without having to, uh, you know, solve these monsters at scale uh, problems. I think the other um, opportunity is thinking about AI more than just as a decision aid. I think we tend to, you know, we think of AI, and it's got a, an important place in, in decision aid, but Quite frankly, if I could use AI to simplify um, how we maintain a piece of equipment or how we troubleshoot a piece of equipment or how do we train a new skill quickly or how do we take advantage of the, you know, reams and reams of data we've had for acoustics, uh, those would all be very, very useful, very practical uh, solutions as we, I think, all work together to do AI at scale. Uh, I just don't want to wait for the big bang of the, you know, the great promise of AI to uh, get in the way of us deploying it right now uh, to ha uh, help us with practical problems today. Uh, some, of, some of that is, again, retooling our architecture, you know, creating digital twins of our systems so that you can rapidly uh, replicate those systems and, and uh, apply uh, tools. Some is making uh, our data more available so we can take existing AI algorithms and apply it to large data sets. Uh, and a lot of it is creating new relationships uh, because the folks who are best in the world at AI may not have been uh, the same folks who have worked with the Navy over the years in, in other areas. Uh, and so rather than teach our you know, traditional performers how to become AI experts, we're trying to create new pathways so the AI experts can uh, work with us immediately. Is there a culture in the Navy, in the Marine Corps, where these technologies are being embraced, you're watching how they're changing and, uh, and, and you know, following those developments? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, again, I think we can all, you know, we can all point to whatever organization we're in and, and uh, understand where there's new opportunities to do better. So I, I certainly don't want to uh, represent that we've got it all uh, perfectly well and we understand all the pieces. Uh, but what I would say is, you know, there are the, the, a couple, I think, competitive advantage of the Navy. One, we've held on to a technical workforce organically, which gives us a, a much more uh, rapid ability to shift and take advantage of new opportunities as they exist. 
uh, versus having to only get to them through a contract through through somebody. Uh, we have um, separated our, uh, I would say, uh, combat systems and compute uh, and decision aids uh, from the platform. So we can, we, we can put common compute, common algorithms, common uh, decision aids, all that rapidly across multiple platforms with consistency uh, so that if we can you know, craft a new tool, say an AI-driven decision aid, we can rapidly get it across all of our platforms without having to uniquely integrate it. And as importantly, the sailors or Marines who are using it don't have to learn multiple systems. Uh, they can learn one system and then apply it on multiple different platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, and then third, through NavalX, through uh, relationships with, let's say, your organization, others, creating this thirst for knowledge uh, and valuing relationships well ahead of a business transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have found that um, we can get great value from each other um, long before there's a business transaction. Uh, bureaucracies can sometimes wait for the business transaction to then figure out how to create a relationship. And, uh, and we're trying to flip that and do that with all our joint partners, do that with the Joint AI Center, with our Air Force and Army partners, uh, so that we can operate again, kind of at network speed. And anybody who's got an idea can get to the person who is interested in that idea as quickly as possible. This episode is brought to you by Experfy. Incubated in Harvard Innovation Lab, Experfy provides custom future of work solutions, such as private talent clouds and skill taxonomies. Experfy differentiates itself by using subject matter experts to pre-vet and pipeline candidates for AI and high-end technology skills. However, Experfy Talent Cloud Platform is skill agnostic and can be licensed to build custom talent clouds for any and all skills. In a different use case, enterprises interested in employee intermobility can license the Experfy platform to create an internal gigs marketplace where interested employees can be algorithmically matched to projects, gamifying their learning experience. Visit www.experfy.com for more information. One question that often comes up, uh, and this is not particular to the Navy or the Marine Corps, but more generally uh, to the government, that hiring uh, contractors uh, with specialized knowledge is always very tough, that you can't just, like a company can bring someone, a, a SME in and put them on a, a job, right? It's, it's much harder. Any thoughts on how to overcome such hurdles? Um, I think one of the ways is to try and create, I'll say, um, uh, technical architectures, business architectures, cultural architectures that value ideas from wherever they come from, not have to get the ideas all from one place and therefore to to bring your idea, you've got to join a different affiliation or something. We uh, I spoke yesterday, we've got our annual small business conference and we're well over uh, $10 billion already this year alone uh, funded directly to small businesses. Uh, so I think sometimes um, there's a misperception, uh, sometimes a real challenge uh, that the only way to get something into a Navy platform is through a large prime contractor. Uh, and that's not the case. We've got continued work to go to get there. I'm really excited about things like digital twins, uh, things like Naval X, uh, things like compartmentalizing kind of the software and data so that we can make it available to many more folks. So you don't you know, you've got a direct entry uh, for your idea. It doesn't have to come through, you know, some big product uh, provider. Uh, conversely, we're using some of the uh, these, uh, you know, uh, large prime contracts and incentivizing them to bring new ideas in uh, versus maybe some of the tr more traditional disincentives, which has plagued uh, the DOD for some time. How do you think about developing a workforce that is not only technologically well versed, but also is properly skilled, managed, and you know given the right opportunities? Yeah, I mean, again, that's a uh, you know continued uh, work in uh, in in progress for us. Uh, the way I'm really approaching it, I you know um, is you know, I'm I'm a pretty simple guy. I kind of call it the four D's, right? Um, Decentralize the organization. Uh, so that we can empower folks uh, with the right capabilities to make decisions and make a difference at their level. 
then um, distinguish the work uh, so that we're picking the right tool for the right job. Uh, many times in bureaucracies, you know, we kind of have one tool uh, to fit all processes uh, and, you know, how to, how to interact with a agile startup AI company is not the same as how we're interacting with somebody designing a nuclear power plant. And it's not, you know, we don't want the same process. We want to pick the right process. So if we can that differentiate the work is kind of the kind of second three. Uh, the third is digitize and get away from, you know, from these manual stovepipe systems and really get the power of the digit working for us. And then last, not that it's least, but, but because it's most important is developing talent. Uh, we, we've got, you know, specific looks at our workforce. As I said, we've got a great uh, talented workforce. We're continuing looking to shape that and then looking for a new and creative programs, whether it's Naval X and creating relationships there. We've got programs now, if you're in industry and want to come work in the government for 12 months, we've got a way to allow that. Or if you're in government, and you want to go work out in industry and and I think if we can get that trust, understanding, and respect, kind of that mutual trust and understanding and respect level up three or four notches, then we can overcome a lot of the, you know, impedance mismatch because we just aren't communicating effectively to one another. That's why, the, you know, a forum like this is so important mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of our challenge, particularly as the you know, size of the military has gotten smaller, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the culture, uh, even across the whole country has been changing in terms of where R&D is done and in what manner. There's a lot of misunderstanding and misperception, which to me then um, uh, put at risk opportunities where we can capitalize on. And so uh, a lot of our efforts right now are just create those new pathways, uh, create that network speed. Uh, you, I think you had Lieutenant Colonel J.J. Snow on from the Air Force. Right, she's a great collaborator, uh, and and when we get these connectors all working together, uh, then we can start connecting up folks and break down some of the perceptions that have plagued us for so long. You know, you you mentioned um, Lieutenant Colonel J. S. Snow, who's in a different agency, and then you've got other partners that may be in academia. Uh, outside the government, so how do you collaborate with the different stakeholders? So I think you got to create. Um, uh, I'd say collision spaces, right? You've got to, uh, you know, make relationships before you have to. You've got to be curious at what's going on. And then you've got to have an opportunistic mindset. Uh, and, you know, this whole uh, idea of how to be innovative in public service is, uh, is really a, an interesting one. But what I found, again, you kind of going full circle to your first question. I didn't understand it at the time, but having served in so many different services and so many different capacities and so many different roles uh, has exposed me to a much broader, I would say, perspective uh, so that uh, if I've got an opportunity, opportunistic mindset, uh, I can leverage those opportunities maybe in a new and different way. And so, as, as I'm sure you've experienced, most innovation isn't kind of bolt out of the blue I came up with this great idea. I mean, it's great. It's connecting things in new ways and in different ways uh, and with a different maybe focus. And, and I think that's the real power of what's going on at Softworks or AFWorks or NavalX or DIU or the things you guys are doing up there in, the, in your uh, center there. It's creating these opportunities for collisions. I kind of call it pre-planned serendipity. I don't know what's going to happen when we get these groups together. I just know something cool is going to happen. Uh, and so if we can recognize that potential uh, and make some investment in that, uh, we're already seeing the returns are coming back tenfold. So, so uh, globally, we know that uh, AI is being embraced uh, by countries like China. So how, how does what happens globally influence what you do at the Navy and the Marine Corps? Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you hear in, in kind of our national defense strategy, you know, kind of global competition, right? And if you're going to compete globally, right, you've got to have an opportunistic mindset. You've got to kind of have a mission focus. Uh, and then you've got to leverage what is what I think will always be an enduring competitive advantage of a democracy. Uh, and that's that you can attract and collaborate with uh, friends and partners. 
Uh, a non-democracy cannot do that. They may be able to coerce, they may be able to influence, but they can't attract. And so, uh, you know, as, as one of the things we're really trying to do is, you know, we've got some really, really hard problems. We have very complex issues. I mean, it's going to not any one organization is going to be able to solve it. Uh, I'm certainly not smart enough to solve it. Uh, what I can do to help and where I think we're all working towards is create the culture and the environment where folks can get together to solve really complex problems, create the relationships before they need to, uh, and leverage our collective abilities, uh, not just the abilities of one organization or one country uh, or, you know, military or academic or private service. It's going to take all of us working together to get there. Uh, this isn't new. If you look back to World War II, if you look back to, uh, you know, other times of uh, great power competition that took everybody to working, to get, working together, uh, that's where, you know, my focus is uh, with the team here in the Navy and the Marine Corps. Any parting words for our audience? Yeah, I think it's just uh, get involved, get engaged. Uh, you know, we are looking for, you know, my whole goal is uh, if you've got an idea, something you can do, you think you can help, is to reduce the time and cost and, uh, and bureaucratic pain to get that idea to somebody to talk to. And, uh, and your Navy Marine Corps needs you. We're, we're open for business. Uh, and if we're going to all succeed here, it's going to take us all working together. And that's uh, really where my focus is. I think AI is bringing great promise to us as long as we're bold enough to work together and figure out how to bring that to bear. Uh, but don't wait for the giant solutions. Uh, if you've got practical solutions that help us today, uh, we need to get those in the, fa in the field quickly. It's not just good enough to discover them. We've got to get them all the way uh, to the end user so that we, uh, so they can use them. So uh, again, thanks for the opportunity here. It's been great uh, talking with you and, and appreciate all you are doing up there to help connect everybody together. Thank you, Secretary Gertz. Uh, real pleasure having you as well.